good morning or good afternoon. Uh, we have people joining from basically from the U.S., uh, Canada, and South Africa, Zambia. So it depends on where you are, uh, and I believe Argentina as well. Um, I'd like to give you a warm welcome to this online course. Um, it's GIS for Agriculture 2 as part of GRGOS training program. And we'll be uh, going into detail of using imagery and field data collection using GPS and tablets or smartphones. Um, so first of all, thank you for, for joining us. And today it's uh, the, um, the only live presentation that we'll have during this course. Uh, we'll be having an overview of the online course course the different topics we'll be reviewing uh, like a bird's eye view of, of the, the whole contents uh, how the online training works and then during the next weeks we'll be uh, providing material through the online training center and providing support so you can complete the exercises and, and review the, all the, the material so hopefully by the end of this course some of you may already have extensive experience with imagery or are already collecting data but uh, we hope to add something new to your tool set as agronomists or producers um, so just to introduce us um, we have here in this uh, pictures uh, without much formal introduction uh, Mariano who will be supporting the whole process he's our training facilitator uh, Francis, uh, he's in Argentina. Francis is in South Africa. He's a uh, one of our leading consultants. Um, he's an independent consultant and also supports Geo Agro. So he'll be sharing some of his experience with these topics. And myself, Ed, this is from ten, 10 years ago, so it can be a, li a little bit misleading. I look much older. Uh, um, I'm um, also part of the Geo Agro team, and I'm specialized in GIS. So, uh, well, before we start, uh, just to, to uh, so you're comfortable with the with the tools, this is the basic screen for the webinar. Uh, here you have a button where you can raise your hand anytime uh, in case you want to share anything or you want to ask a question, and I'll open your microphone. We keep them closed just for a matter of uh, background noise, but you, we can open it anytime for anyone. So. It's it's always good if you feel like sharing or asking a question. It's always very, very good for the presentation. And also, you can send chat questions. I'll be sending some questions there. There's a chat section where we can exchange uh, dialogue and messages. So just feel any time uh, you like to ask something, that just enter it there, and it will be answered in order. OK, so this is the, the basic view of the course, what we're going to be reviewing. Uh, we'll be having uh, three units. The first unit, the first week, will be uh, reviewing information on the use of remote sensing, or it could be aerial, could be satellite uh, um, imagery. Uh, and we say imagery, we say optical imagery uh, captured by optical sensors. And we'll, we'll review in detail the concepts behind it. And uh, we say multispectral imagery, which, is, which means that we're going to capture multiple bands of the light uh, reflectance. And NDVI, which is one of the indexes, one of the popular indexes, there are several, uh, which means Normalized Differential Vegetation Index, uh, which is one of the indexes that gives us uh, an idea of the crop status. And we'll see why it's used extensively. It's one of the indexes that's mostly used, and we'll be using this for the exercise in this course. Uh, in the second unit, second week, we'll be working, we'll be using that imagery, and that imagery is useful to uh, locate some problem areas, some good areas in our fields. So we'll be using this as a guidance for, for georeference sampling or and directed sampling. It could be small sampling, could be field visits or observations. Uh, with a GPS device. So we'll see how we exchange information from the, the GIS, from the Geographic Information System of our farm, into the GPS, Global Position System. So that's one device that we use. Another uh, device that we may have or may not, but it's always good to, to be informed and see what you can do, uh, is to use uh, one of the latest generation uh, smartphones that can be running on uh, Android or um, 
iOS, the iPad or iPhone, uh, or BlackBerry, and tablets that run on these operating systems to collect uh, field data. So that's going to be the focus of the third week. Um, before we move on, and we wait for the screen to re refresh. Uh, and also, as a quick uh, overview, these are the software tools that we'll be using. Um, we find that, uh, based on our experience, that really uh, the web is necessary, the desktop is necessary, and the mobile applications are becoming more necessary, and they can work together. So the idea is to use three different environments where we're going to exchange information. For instance, if you're going to be in the field, uh, you're going to be using, it's more practical to use a smartphone or a tablet, and chances are that in most places you won't have good internet connection, so you need to work offline. Uh, in some places, in some countries, there's uh, rural internet, and it's becoming more and more available, but um, it's the, the mobile device, it's, it's uh, practical uh, as opposed to a laptop or a PC. So we're going to use uh, work on these three environments. Uh, in the web, we use a tool called um, uh, Farm 360, um, and we'll review this in detail later on, uh, where we're going to georeference our farm and fields. Also, we use that as a way to order uh, NDVI. The GR uses this, and, and the growers that, and agronomists that work with GeoAgro to request different types of services. In our case, in our course, we're going to use this to request uh, this NDVI uh, index from uh, previous seasons. Um, then we're going to, after this process, we're going to be able to review it on the web, and then we're going to download it to a desktop tool, to GRO GIS or, or other GIS tools. So second, after we receive that imagery, we're going to import, and then we're going to create a sampling layer, connect to the to the GP, uh, there's a typo there, connect from and to the GPS, and transfer information from the GIS to GPS. And also we can navigate it online in the field uh, if we have internet connection. We can see our location kitchen in the field. So sometimes it's a good option to take your laptop and see where you are. And this very recent uh, addition to our family of, of tools, it's uh, GNOTE, where you can uh, download reference layers such as farm and fields. This is what you're looking at in, the, in this picture. Um, this is done through the web. And then this can be used to go to the field and take georeference notes, take a note in a certain location. This works offline and complete data in each point. And this is also done offline. At the end of the day, you can synchronize this with a web-based tool. So you'll see it looks uh, like a number of things, but one by one, it's, it's quite simple, and everything has its place and its use. So this is a uh, very quick overview. And now we're going to go in detail into each of the, um, the of the units. Uh, before we continue, I'd like to to ask if you have any questions, and also just to start using. Do you have a GPS device, and do you have a tablet or smartphones? Really, it's not. Uh, it's it's very good if you do have this type of devices. Um, but it's not completely required because you can uh, review all the materials, see how it works, you sample data, and have an idea of what you can do. So in, in case you haven't bought it yet, it's, it's a good way to have an introduction. So if you'd like, if you could please uh, share this uh, in the chat window, you'll see uh, two questions. If you'd like to share before we proceed, just to have a little bit of feedback. If you'd like to to share with uh, the group, if you're using any any, okay, we have an answer here. We have uh, Francis. Thank you, Francis. Both the GPS and the Samsung Galaxy Note. This is good for the for this uh, for the sellers to see what people are using. Then Sean, also from South Africa, is using GPS and Samsung Galaxy tablet. 
Um, so it'll be very, very, very interesting to see your fields there. Martin is using uh, a GPS device and a BlackBerry, but not very smartphone. Myself, I also my my um, I was walking in, in the in the wild with my wife and family, and she well I don't want to blame my wife, but she let my iPhone fall, and now I have a, a very old uh, cell phone. It didn't sound good, but that's how I, that's how I lost my iPhone. Then we have Samsung and iPad from George, uh, Ruben in the U.S. an iPhone and iPad, and. Harold has an iPad, an iPad mini, and Motorola Droid. Hi, Harold. Harold is uh, very well equipped. I have gone to the field with him, and he's got all types of devices, uh, very good, uh, um, uh, takes very good pictures, so he's very well equipped. Um, so the idea is to, to make sense of all these devices and, and integrate this into farming for range. I also have an iPad from Jerry. So, well, we have uh, uh, the three types, iPad, BlackBerry and Samsung, and see, we'll see how it works. And also the GPS devices, we'll see also how it works and what uh, and how we will be using them. So thank you very much for your all your replies. And um, and it this is good also for us to see what type of uh, issues or not we may have and what type of devices you have is is it's good for support. So uh, we write the articles, the support articles based on what people use. So. Okay, so we're going into uh, unit one. So remember, we're going to be using, uh, and in the first unit, we'll concentrate, we won't be using the mobile devices yet. We'll just concentrate on using uh, imagery and NDVI for your fields. And in this very quick overview, it will be around 10-15 minutes, we'll review uh, the NDVI concepts and benefits, also what satellite systems are being used, or at least we're using, but most uh, service providers are. Uh, there's not much more than what, what we see, uh, which is a lot. And then we are going to go into the first exercise, which is to request NDVI mass history, history because we can only, all, all, only look back. Uh, but of course, uh, we'll see what of these services are available for the future. So we'll be using NDVI maps from the past to see what happened in your fields in the past and use them as a reference layer for using your GPS or smartphone. So first, concepts. Uh, so these are very simple concepts, um, but it's good to have an overview. Uh, the electromagnetic spectrum. As you uh, already know, this uh, we are surrounded by waves from uh, radio, TV, microwaves, and the visible uh, spectrum uh, is a very small part of that uh, range of possible uh, ranges. So we have X-ray that are used in medicine, up to radio, TV, which are used for communicating. Uh, in the middle, we have visible bandwidth, which is this what we capture from the satellites, actually. This is a visible region. So, and this can be physically measured. This the waves have length, and this what this reflected light, uh, uh, how it works as uh, waves that are transmitted. So, what we're going to have it's uh, when we, when the so that's why we say we will use optical remote sensing as opposed to radar images where uh, they capture uh, sound waves uh, or thermal sensors where, where they capture heat. We're going to capture light and light decomposed in different uh, uh, bands and what it's going to capture it's uh, different bands which comprise different ranges. And these bands will differ if you are reflecting light on vegetation or concrete or a built-up area. So different objects will absorb light differently and they will have different reflected radiation. Now, what interests us as uh, people working in agriculture, and I must say I'm not an agronomist, 
even though I disguise like one. I'm a GIS guy. So um, chlorophyll, which is uh, generated in the photosynthesis process, is what we capture in the visible wave bands. And chlorophyll has the uh, property of capturing blue and red uh, uh, bands. And also we have a near infrared band, which uh, is related with biomass, uh, which reflects this near infrared band. So the sensors that the satellites use, or the, in essence, the uh, sa satellites or planes that use multi-spectral cameras, that are cameras that are equipped to capture the different bands, they will measure the disappearance of red light, how much of that red light is absorbed, this red light, uh, by the chlorophyll, and how much uh, near infrared is reflected by the biomass. So that's the basic concept. And with that, there's the physical explanation for everything, and this is what it looks like. You have beans, alfalfa, wheat, grass. So different crops will have different uh, what they call a spectral signature. What, what is the level of absorption and, um, of these bands and according to the different wavelengths? So I won't go much in detail. Uh, so reflectance is high near infrared regions, which, is, which shows high biomass, and soils tend to be brighter, high reflectance. So this is uh, the, the, the purple line in the bottom shows soil signatures. It's very different to vegetation. So this will be available for your review and uh, I won't go in much farther detail but the idea is that you have very different signature be between a vegetation and other objects and be between crops you'll have also different uh, signature. So um, normalized differential vegetation index which is what we use. What we'll be doing is combining two bands which are very useful to measure biomass. Basically, it's an index from minus 1 to 1, where we're going to compare near-infrared and red. If you remember, near-infrared related with biomass, red related with chlor chlorophyll. And we're going to combine them in a formula that uh, basically shows that low values, it's a uh, less healthy crop, or crop in, in sense, sense. and Higher values reflect higher, uh, crop, higher. Uh, I mean, healthier crops or growing crops. So, we use this to monitor crops. It provides a qualitative record of vegetation coverages, and it changes in different time periods. At uh, and we have seen this in a number of crops. We have seen this in sunflower, wheats, uh, we're trying it with sugarcane, uh, um, many different crops where we see that there's a strong correlation. Corn, of course. Uh, soybean have to be careful with uh, saturation because the canopy closes and, uh, and there's uh, there's not so strong correlation between the NDVI at certain stages with the yields. Uh, so it has this important relation with crop yields data, so we use this as also a crop, as a yield estimator. And it's related with the phenology, of course, because the, 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 the plant is changing throughout the growing cycle, and the NDVI will change accordingly. Uh, and it's, uh, it's very practical, it's less time, cost-effective, and biased, it's indirect measurements. You have a, a map of, of uh, NDVI values. And I'm going to skip here a little bit uh, and get out of the presentation and just so hopefully keep your interest and show you what, what this looks like. And then we'll, so I'm going to go to GR.com, go into Farm360, and I'm going to go into some of the farms that, so I'm going to go to a, a farm that I know that has an NDVI in Venezuela, that's why it's called Wagamaya. So this is what you will be basically uh, receiving from, from your side. It's the NDVI history, it's a number of layers. 
So here you see uh, January 2012, October 2011, November 2010. So it's interesting to see what was going on at that time. And here, for instance, this was a rice field that was turning to sugar cane, and there's still some greenish patterns that show. There are greenish problems on this side of the of the of the field. So this is very interest, uh, interesting. Uh, the farm manager. Uh, in many cases, will not does not have to uh, need to have GIS experience. He doesn't um, have remote sensing knowledge. But when when well, this is very interesting uh, because they will tell you right away. Okay, what were the issues at certain points of time that may have affected this NDVI? So this is basically what's going to look like, and what you're going to be receiving in your as we process the history of your farm. So this is what we call its cause effect is unbiased because we'll see how it changes from seasons to season or from week to week. And this is also something to keep in mind. The phenology or the crop cycle uh, here it's a figure that shows the NDVI it is in cotton. So this, you have different curves uh, and different um, um, uh, time periods. They have, uh, this is day, days after seeding. So in terms of day after seeding, you'll see how the NDVI changes over time. So you have different. And this was part of a trial with nitrogen. And it was also relating how nitrogen affected NDVI um, due to more vigorous growth, uh, but the shape is basically the same. So this is something to keep in mind when to collect, and this depends on what you want the imagery for. If you want it for yield estimation purposes, maybe 60 days before. If you want to see uh, plant counts, maybe uh, 30, 45 days after emergence. Uh, in this case, rapid growth is always a good correlation with, uh, with um, the yield potential yield, so that's why uh, uh, that's why we use it uh, for, to determine productivity, uh, use different years to determine productivity of the fields. And this is very practical in case that you don't have a yield monitor, or you haven't processed a yield monitor, or to compare with a yield monitor. So this is something to keep in mind when you request your images, you, um, you will be um, taking into account the period. This is for the Midwest from May to October. So you have different uh, cycles in your region and you, you will want to keep in mind what is your cycle and when to request imagery. Uh, otherwise, what will happen is, let me see something red here. Yeah, well this was close to emergence in this case, so you have some activity. And this was a time of no activity, uh, January 2012 after the harvest. So, um, so this is what you, it will look like if you take NDVI outside a growing period. Okay, and now something to keep in mind is resolution. Uh, we're going to be using Landsat imagery at 30 meter resolution for our trial um, in your fields. And this is useful to scout, determine issues that are affecting the health of the plan. Uh, it is good for making decisions for the next year, maybe some nitrogen decisions in some crops like uh, corn or maybe wheat that fertilization during season or late fertilization we have seen in wheat that works. Uh, there is a high correlation to yield map, so we also use to estimate yields. A higher resolution, you have more application. You can evaluate more nutrient deficiencies. You can correlate with this with tissue tests, soil samples or equipment problems, compassion, depth control, uh, locate tiles, or problems with uh, pests and diseases. And this to give you an idea of the different types of imagery. This mid resolution, so from this uh, 22 meter, um, it looks very much like the 30 meter resolution that we're going to be using. The same field with 5 meters. Um, then we have 30 meter, which is what we're 
going to be actually using will see some problem areas in your fields or no problems maybe. And this is what we use at two meters, so it's good for, for instance, evaluate uh, population density. So you have different resolutions, different applications. And I'll just go quickly there, just so you know, there are other vegetation indexes which are more narrow, more focused. You can relate to chlorophyll to nitrogen, so um, there are many indexes. And and this, our suggestion is start with NGVI, see what you find, and then uh, you know, uh, we, uh, there, there's information available for for more more uh, specialized indexes and higher resolution. Always comes with a cost, so, you know, so let's start with a basic options, see how it works, and then see if we can specialize. What we're going to be using is a Landsat system. And as I, uh, we were mentioning, this captures different bands of, land, uh, of, of light with different wavelengths, uh, different resolutions. This is the old Landsat uh, thematic mapper, and NASA and USGS, uh, and thank you to NASA and USGS, will have a Landsat 8 that's already available. Very very, uh, uh, it was just uh, May the 30th, so it's very, very timely. So now we can, this is a free resource that can be downloaded and processed and has a 50-day uh, revisit, so it's, it's very, uh, very useful. Uh, these are different satellite systems. We'll be using the Landsat system that you see here. It's also it's very valuable because if it's a four years image bank. It's 30 meter multispectral. And then you have the higher solution like Pleiades. There are other vendors like uh, Worldview 2 or GOI. There are several. Uh, Spot 6, uh, RapidEye with 5 meters. Spot 4, 5 are older satellite. Deimos is 22 meter. This is what the crop estimations in the US is done with. And we're also using it in Venezuela for crop estimation. Uh, you see here, this is the, the area that it covers. So that's why it's expensive for an individual farmer to capture imagery because it covers very large areas. So the idea is always to, to try to team up and capture between a group of farmers. Um, so this just generates information to give you an idea. Every satellite has bands and ranges, and every, every satellite has a revisit time. OK. Any, any questions? This is a very quick overview, just, just so we are uh, in the same page of what we're talking about. It's simple concepts. Uh, it can be applied to anyone's farm, anywhere. That's the beauty of it. And now we're going to see the first exercise. And also, please share any questions or comments. I'm, I'm sending this just. Just keep in mind if, if, if you have any, any questions or comments, this was a very very quick overview, but there will be the idea is to give you an overview and then go into detail with the course material. So uh, the first week, the goal will be to request NDVI maps history for your farm. So um, and we'll see the practical side of this. Uh, you need to have a farm uploaded to Farm 360, and we're going to see how that is achieved. Some of you have already participated in GIS for Agriculture 1, that's where we review this, or may have already used um, GeoGrass tools. For those of you who, who do not have a farm uploaded, it's very easy. If you have GIS experience, it's, it's really simple. If not, we'll assist you, and it's, it's, uh, it's rather on the simple side, and I'll show you how. Uh, next, you're going to be uh, requesting the NDVI and importance of the dates, uh, save the dates. Uh, and here you'll try to capture periods of growth, uh, maybe look into an extreme year, maybe a year that you had a drought or a flood and see how this compares with normal years. It's, it's good to see how the field uh, behaved. Uh, and then GR will process, and after processing is finished, you can view it on Farm360 or you can download it to GR GIS which is a, the GIS that we provide as part of this course, or other GIS. So most are, uh, other GIS users are using ArcGIS or RView. Maybe some of you are using other farm GIS. And this is, takes us to Unit 2, where we'll be planning field visit locations. We'll be downloading those visits to GPS and upload results to the GIS for analysis. I mean the, the GPS samples and results. So everything is connected. So let me show you real quick. 
what I will do is add a farm. So GIS2 farm. I'm going to say demo so I can remember to delete it. And then I'm going to say 2013. I'm going to say acres in the US, hectares elsewhere, I believe. And then I'm going to make a mix because I'm going to do something in hectares in the US. It's always good to mix. You always learn things from people from different places. So uh, the US has a, a very regular pattern. And here you will be uploading your farm, your fields. You can import from Google, KML, KMZ. You can import from RView or other GIS at Shapefile. Or you can just go ahead, click on Farms, and then draw your farm. And that's basically it. So the Midwest is a, a regular pattern. Here we have a little bit of urban area. So I would save and then I would go there. And I have my demo GIS2 farm. I have 122 hectares, which times 2.4 is, is about a little bit less than 300 or around 300 hect uh, acres. So that's step one. I go to main menu. So you'll be reviewing this in detail. I will say add service. And then I'm going to say NDVI map. And here I'm going to look for the one that I just created, demo GS2 farm. I'll say continue. Uh, something to keep in mind. Oh, it asked me to draw fields as well. Which I, I didn't do. So I'm going to draw a couple of fields. And I should show that I should have got closer to draw. I was very And these are controls because then the clients may want their NDVI by, by feel. I'm just going to add a label. So this is basically the web GIS, which is very simple and not so powerful because that's how the web is. Then we have then there's the desktop GIS like RV, which is very powerful, Geo GIS, which is somewhere in the middle. Um, so I go to next step. And then I'm going to say about let's say 122 and then using background images I say two images and then click on next step okay and this is important the dates so here you can uh, choose up to six images and this depends on the catalog availability we'll get as many images that are available in the catalog um, that's number one number two uh, this Landsat image bank was discontinued between November 2011 and May 2013. So unfortunately, we cannot help in the 2012 unless we go to other image banks and, and, and buy more images. And it's, it's something you, you do if, if you really need it, like make a, a crop assessment, a damage assessment, that type of thing. But just to study the crop, uh, we'll be using the image bank, which has that gap between November. So, uh, if you choose uh, dates between November 2011 or after two th November 2011, you won't, you won't, uh, we won't get any any images. So here you'll see. Okay, I'm going to say I could be a wide scope. Say April, September, 2011, and then April to 2010, and so on. July. So that depends on what you want to see. So this clicks on save and continue. Oh, and by the way, you're going to uh, find this. We're going to uh, provide you with a coupon code as part of the instruction that you can apply. So you will be uh, you won't have to pay any any fees for this for this job, of course, because we're doing this this course. So. Basically, that's, that's going to be the unit, that's the exercise for, for unit two. And after that, what we're going to do, it's uh, you'll get a notification when your process is done, and then you can go to the next step, which is use that imagery. So this is the end of unit one. 
Uh, any questions so far? Comments? I hope everyone is going to send a Am I coming loud and clear? Because I hear myself, but this is this is a this is the negative side of online training. Usually I don't get to know the people. So I don't see the faces if you're bored or if you're uh interested in seeing on finding out what's going to happen. Uh any uh, do you hear me well? Do you hear me at the uh, back of the room? Okay. Just wait, waiting for a little feedback, and I'll continue with a with a second. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just so just wanted to make sure that you're hanging on there. Okay, unit two. Uh, unit two, it will be about, as we said, define a sampling layer and download points to the GPS. So, uh, we're going to use GPS devices. Some are, or most of you already have uh, a GPS, and this is an old, good old Garmin E-Trex, and, and you'll we'll see, uh, you'll see when we uh, talk about your individual GPS, some of them will be connecting directly to GRGIS, and some of you will need uh, third-party software required, and we'll see about that in a minute. So the first step will be uh, use the imagery that we process, download it to GRGIS, you could also download to our view, uh, and then you're going to create a sampling layer and then download to the GPS device. And then after we go to the field, we may have to capture other points or just the points that we capture, the real location, we're going to import that from the GPS into the GIS. So that's the basic process that we're going to follow in Unit 2. So, there are two GPS in the world, those fully compatible with GRGIS, it follows a protocol called NMEA. Uh, this is what allows to uh, get uh, live data streams, so, uh, and we have uh, different types of GPS in the market, those also called GPX, or what will you use in, in the smartphone, uh, where you don't have a live stream, you just have storage. So those require intermediate software required to exchange with GRGIS. So you'll fall in either two of the one of the two categories. And we'll also review some of the drivers of compatible GPS required. I'm just going to Well thank you, Brittany. You hear me in the back of the room. Um, okay, so sorry. Uh, I didn't change this slide. This has a list of the models that are supported, uh, fully compatible, which means that you connect with, uh, I will send you this list afterward, which connects uh, directly with your GIS and you can see your location, while you are in the field or anywhere, you can see your location in the map and you can download, upload directly, so it, it works very well. There are other models, such as these are the more popular models that are coming up now, E-TREX 10, E-TREX 20, 30, Colorado, Dakota, Nubi, Magellan. These require a, a free software called GPS Babel, which is a clever name for translator. And this is a translator, basically, which will, uh, use, um, which will be useful to download from the GPS and import into GIS. And then something to keep in mind, it's uh, drivers, you can go to the vendors page, it's Garmin or Magellan, download drivers, and also cables will be required, so you'll have need to have this type of cables. But no worry, we'll support you if you're missing anything of this, but just so you know that you will need that. 
And now it must come with Bluetooth or other, of course, or other protocols. So the first step from GeoGIS, and you could strike through GeoAuto here. It's from GIS to GPS. Uh, GeoGIS, it's, it's something we developed to make it easier and to save steps for the agronomist. But you could actually do this with maybe with more steps with other software. So the the workflow is always the same. It's create a sampling layer, and that's why imagery is useful to see how things are working in the field based on imagery, and then based on that you're going to create a sampling layer. You could also use soil maps, you could use electrical conductivity maps, you could use a yield map, you could use so many things. It's a, just a reference layer to direct your sampling. Then you're going to mark points of interest, assign names to the points, show the labels, and download to the GPS. It's longer said than done. So. Basically, in GRGIS, you're going to learn to create a new layer where you're going to put your samples. Second point, it's mark points of interest. So if you have your imagery, you may want to review different locations with good, with high or low crop growth and maybe some problem areas. Number three, you're going to assign names, which is basically filling out a table that's related with the points. We're going to put the point number. Number four is there's a command to show those labels so you know where you are. And number five, it's there is part of the software that based on that sampling points, those sampling points, you're going to, uh, there's another tab called GPS tab and there you can uh, see just the points and with a button you can download directly to the GPS. So that's it. That's how you use imagery to define points and then to download to the GPS. After you have gone to the field, you want to bring your data from GPS to GeoGIS and, and this has three steps. Um, download the data from GPS. You may want to convert that to polygons. Let's say that you uh, survey a polygon feature or a line feature. So those are two steps that you can do. So as the other way around, you download to this screen and then goes into the GIS. Two, it's while you're in the GPS point screen, you can uh, turn those into polygons. So it saves you some digitizing time. Or let's say that you survey a fence or a drainage line or anything that's linear then you're going to convert that into a line. So those are the, the tools that you're going to be reviewing in, in Unit 2. It's from the GPS to the GIS. I mean, from the GIS using imagery to the GPS and from the GPS to the GIS back and have more interaction with the field. Okay, so that's it with Unit 2. We're almost a little bit over time, uh, any I'm sure there will be many questions coming um, coming up, especially in regards to devices. Uh, when you start using your device, chances are uh, 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 this is Murphy's law. Murphy, it's universal. It's in English and Spanish. I guess you know Murphy, and Murphy says that uh, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. So depends on your device. There might be some tweaking or troubleshooting or I'm missing a cable, or my driver is outdated, or uh, anything can happen. Okay, uh, so now we go into the last unit, which is our new member of the family. It's uh, G-Note. So, G-Note uh, let's pretend that we're in a smartphone or tablet. So I'm going to downsize the screen. Gnote, it's a basically it's a web page, and this is this this is uh, really um, how technology has advanced. Not thanks to us, thanks to the to the industry. Uh, it's possible to write very smart applications without having to invest a lot of development hours and having to install some software like a 
from the Android market or iTunes. Let's let me see if there are any questions before we go into the mobile part. Uh, the Garmin Nuvi, uh, there's a question about Garmin Nuvi. I believe that it's the type of GPS uh, that requires uh, the, 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 the translator. So it's not as straightforward. And let's check that in Wiki, which is a, a resource that you can use. Just one second. Oops, I sent it to all <laughs> an internal message. Sorry, just one second, I'm going to I'm going to eliminate the background noise. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, we're back. So Garmin um, U.S. uses speed for measurements in the field. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, when you go into GRGIS, you'll set the units in acres and feet or hectares and meter. That's a very good observation. Also, when you configure, everything is configurable. So we're going to configure the units according to the to the location. Uh, I believe that if if you go here, let's go back to Farm 360, and let's go to a demo farm. I'll get back to the G to the newbie. So this is in hectares, and I think that well, if I had um, so this is in, in meters, um, but when you start a new farm, I'm going to look for 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 another farm. which is in acres. So I'm just going to measure something in acres. So it depends. When you start your farm in acres, will be automatically in acres and feet. If you start something in, in uh, so that's uh, in feet. If you start your farm in hectares, it will be in meters. Going back to the Nuvi question, we have an interest an interesting part of the family, which is Wikiagro, which is we took Wikipedia and made it a knowledge base in for, for agriculture. So I'm going to do a search for GPS uh, so going back to your to your newbie question, there's a support page there. Uh, so Garmin Nuvi, it's it's part of the the group that's not fully compatible, which but still means it doesn't mean that you cannot use it. It means that uh, you have to read an article that says using GPS devices which are not uh, fully compatible, or this is the protocol that we use, and this will require to download a software and do a translation. It's not, it's not too complicated. It's just that requires uh, some tr software to translate. OK, hope I answered uh, the question. And I'm going to go into Gino, which is the unit three. So um, this is what you're going to be seeing in your iPhone or uh, Android phone. Uh, we use it a lot in Android. We have used it in older iPhone uh, devices, not with the newest iPads. But if any, any issues come up, it's it's uh, usually some something very simple to to clear because it's basically a web page. 
We're saying that you don't need to go to Android Market or to iTunes. You just need to enter this URL, which we'll send in the, in the training site. And uh, after you have uh, uploaded your farm, this farm will appear. I have a lot of farms. I'm always doing demos or clients or anything. And you, so I have a, a long list. So you'll you look, look for your uh, for your farm. I'm just going to choose one. Demo for proxy yield. I'm going to click on save. So there I have it to navigate. The the nice thing about this is it's a web page, but you don't need internet connection. But to do what I just did, you need internet connection because uh, you need to download this from uh, this farm and field from the Farm 360 web website. Now. From now on, you can uh, work offline. So if I got disconnected first, I was I would stop uh, the presentation, but second, I would continue to use it because everything's stored locally, and the same is in your in your smartphone. So this is what you're going to see. For now, we only have these features: the farm boundaries, the field boundaries. Uh, for future versions, we'll, we're planning to add uh, any other layers that you create in the in the GIS. So what I'm going to do, if I click, if you try this on real conditions, if you click on this little button here, you're going to have your real location with an estimation of what the level of, of error is, which depends on the accuracy of your GPS, the triangulation, and the number of features. You'll, you'll see some technical articles and it will tell you what your level is. So it's going to be interesting to find out from, this is the nice thing about online training and having people from, from different countries to see how it works in different countries. And then if you like to take a georeference sample once you are in the place where you want to be, you say, I'm going to take a sample and I'm going to say crop corn and then I see some weeds or I'm not very economic. Uh, automatically you have a field and the sample name and then I'm going to move to the next field, and here I'm going to say, okay, the field one, and also let's say I have soybean, and then I may have another another observation. I'm going to click on save, and I can continue taking points. So everything is done offline. You don't need web connection. Now, if you want to upload this to the farm that you share with your team, uh, I mean, that you have access and you can share. You say, okay, this is the sampling or the field visit on, I think it's, uh, today it's June 4th. I click on save. Two features were added to my farm. And then you're going to be back at the office with a cup of coffee and say, okay, and you could, this could be someone different, so actually you could have a partner or the farm manager who is in the field, taking those field. I go to demo proxy yield. I say, okay, what's happening? And say, I have used this for, uh, for other examples, as you can see. So here I see what my partner my colleague visited, and if I click, let's wait until it refreshes. Now it's refreshed. So this is what you will see at the office. So I click here. Oops, I want to say, okay, what information did, did we find here? So here, okay, this was another observation. I have crop soybean, and, and that's basically it. I click here. So there are some weeds here, so I could even uh, use it for taking decisions on what to do. Okay. Any any questions so far? Let me check real quick. 
on questions. So basically, that's uh, that's a course. It's uh, imagery, GPS, and tablets and smartphones, and that's basically what you would do. Um, yes, sorry, uh, they are asking me for the URL is for GNote. It's this, and we'll we'll send this. Uh, well, this will be part of the course material. Um, then, can the data co be uh, collected at a uh, can data collected at a point be a table with several pieces of data for that observation point? Not in this uh, release. Um, you have to take another point. Um, now, the the purpose, if you notice, the form it's a general form with uh, auxiliary fields. So at this point, we are gathering comments from agronomists on what things they like to, and this is going to be a very interesting point of debate in the course. What things do you like or do you need uh, to collect? Uh, so we see people uh, for pest and disease monitoring, for harvest control, for plant population. So we're trying to get ideas and, and, and we're preparing next releases where we'll have some uh, configurable uh, data structures uh, being able to see an image uh, in the background or this one it's new Harold it's uh, having uh, the possibility of collecting uh, more, uh, several pieces of data for the observation point okay uh, I have another, another question Gino requests an email address as well as a password password do we use the same that you use for signing up for the course so I'm going to uh, let me see how I log out. I don't know how to log out. But b basically, um, so I'm going to uh, do the same process if I was not logged in. So the I'm going to add a farm. So if you're not logged in like I was, it will ask you for the email and password. This is the same email and password that you used to sign up for the course to the online training center, which I will show you in a minute to close this presentation, and to Farm360, where you're going to create a farm. So it's all the same user and password. It's a global user password. So I'm going to introduce mine. And if you have a farm created, you could see it here. If you don't have a farm created, you should uh, create one first. So it says login succeeded. I'm going to say add a farm. So here, this is where you would list the farms that you have. So that's, I hope I answer your question. Okay, any other questions before we do the... the um, okay, 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 so all questions are answered. So the last thing is how do we continue? We continue in GRS Training Center, which is, you may want, and you will receive an email, and we'll be uh, bugging you with emails for the next four weeks. Uh, so please check your emails. So, because after this presentation, we'll send you an email to, to let you know that this all this material is available at the Online Training Tra Center. The Online Training Center is training.gr.com. The other way to to access it is if you go to the home page, there's a link there, access to virtual classroom is exactly the same thing. So in case you forget, it's to, you just have to remember GeoAgro. I have a joke, I don't know if whether to tell it or not, but about people forgetting things. But I, my, my memory is fairly mean, so uh, you just have to remember GeoAgro.
if if anyone wants to listen to the joke, just let me know through the chat window, and I'll torture you with this one. But I need some reassurance. Okay, uh, there's a comment um, by Jerry and this course for environmental sampling. Okay, there's there's one well, there's one person who who wants to take the risk to, to, to listen to the joke. So I'll go ahead. Uh, there was this guy, this old guy like me, um, who had a tendency to forget things. Um, and so, oh, you know, he's taking a pill, he's very happy, he's with his friend and he says, uh, hey, you know, I'm taking this marvelous pill that now I remember everything. And his friend asked, uh, well, what's the name of the pill? Oh, wait, I forgot. Let me remember. Uh, what's the name of that? flower that has thorns, that's red, that has a beautiful, uh, a very beautiful smell. And the other guy says, Rose. Oh, yeah, that's it. Hey, Rose, what's the name of the pill that I forgot? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a good one because I don't hear the, the feedback, but that won't be part of the training material. Okay. Uh, so, let's go into the training, the training site. So you have the username and the password, that's the same they use always. And then I have a lot of courses, you'll just have one or two maybe. So you'll see this, GS for Agriculture 2, May 2013. And you're going to see a very simple screen, and let's review. So you see here uh, the colleagues that are participating. So you see here people from different locations. Uh, you also see here um, grades as you complete quizzes, your profile, which is something we encourage people to uh, complete with their picture and, and what their interest is. You'll see here anytime you have an issue, you just here you need help, there will be a form with name, email, your question, and if you like to have phone support, some people don't like it, some people like it, so if you like to be reached, just let us know, and also there's the CAPTCHA there that we have to do it because otherwise we get a lot of, a lot of spam, and you could also attach a file, it's always useful that you attach something that's going on, in, so you just click on submit, it's going on under screen and helps. So this is what you're going to be seeing. Uh, we're going to be seeing imagery and DVI material. So there, uh, you have a. Those are the basic resources. You have books where you can review the the material there. This is, for instance, how do you download the NDVI map? There's a video for doing that. So it's really a step by step, and just you know, it takes a little bit of patience from your side. It does, it's not so much material, it just takes a little bit of time to sit down and, and review that and try it in your, in your computer. And then there's always a book with material, a forum where we encourage people to discuss things, or, or uh, in this case, in the first case, we'll be introducing a uh, course participant. It's always very, very interesting to see what each one is doing and exchange opinions and, and, and information. It's always a good place later to, to help other colleagues or find help. And then activity one, it's an exercise. So here's the step by step to So there's a code that you will use for instance to uh, avoid uh, paying any fees for this. And then there's a quiz where there it's, it's a very uh, it's a very quick uh, multiple choice just to, to, to wrap up the, the course. There will be a second unit which is not available yet on GIS GPS, a third unit on collecting with uh, G notes, and the fourth we left it for a practical exercise. The idea is to give you the option to 
um, to do an exercise with GPS or with your tablet and send us a screenshot. Um, so basically that's that's it and that's how we complete it and this uh, there will be at the end a certificate of completion and also for those who completed quizzes which is fairly simple as well as the practical exercise the course is completed you get a, a certificate of completion and also this is counts in the US and Canada for certified crop advisors as a continuing education units from the CCA program. Okay, so this is basically the end of the presentation and, and there's a uh, there's a couple of comments. Uh, Jerry, yes, this is for environmental sampling and remediation of contaminated fields for plotting, so it's going to be very interesting to, to learn about your experience, how this is taking uh, uh, information from the field. Also, they ask, I do not have Farm 360. How do I get this? Uh, Farm 360, it's, so this will be in the, in the initial book. It's just go to the web and click on Farm 360. That's all you need to do. And there you will have to uh, log in with your user password. And then you can start working. I have some farms. You would start by doing add farm. So really it's it's a very straightforward. It's part of the it's part of the tools, it's free, it's uh, it's part of the training. Uh, the only thing that you have to install, and this is all part of the course material and step by step process. It's go to Geology IS and go to download Geology IS, so it, that will install the software in your computer. Or you could do the exercises if you're already using our view, but it, we encourage people to try Geology IS because we, we've tried to make it simpler for economic use and you'll see when we do the, the exercises. Okay, if, I don't know if there are any other questions. I don't know if the joke was understood. That's my biggest um, concern. So, if someone did not understand it, I'll okay. I have I have here some some approval. So it was. Thank you, Harold, for the support. Um, it's also something that you can tell in in the family. It's it's there's nothing shameful about that joke. So it's a, it's a multicultural joke. Okay, so this is the the end of today. Uh, this is the only live presentation. There will be a number of videos, exercises, quizzes. Uh, also, at some point, uh, we'll invite you to a webinar on available imagery. We are uh, very excited about uh, Landsat 8, which is a mid-resolution satellite, but um, we have had just a good news that it's available, so this will support the whole the whole idea of using imagery to support field decisions. And we'll give um, also a, a webinar on, on different uh, satellites that are being used in the in the in agriculture with no review of the different uh, uh, vendors and, and systems. And it's good to have it at the end when you have had some experience with, with Lancet. So we'll keep you posted. So today is the only presentation. There will, won't be a live presentation next week, but there will be a lot of follow-up through the website. So you'll, you'll be receiving email notices and also the news here. So the next step will be to, during this whole week, uh, we invite you to go through this uh, unit one to request your NDVI and we will be notifying you when the second week is available to continue with the exercises DS and DPS. So that will be all for the moment. Uh, uh, just one more thing. Yes. 
Uh, there's a question, Ruben, uh, GIS downloaded, not cPlanner. cPlanner is the software that we use to connect to the USDA, and we have to remove it from the site because they changed their system. So, so uh, cPlanner is, is not uh, working with the USDA because they have um, changed their system basically, and, and, and we are waiting to hear from them about it has to connect to the USDA uh, database. GRGIS is, uh, has been downloaded, Ruben, and, and, um, um, and this is what we're going to use to connect GIS with GPS um, for the course. So, so ne next step is uh, you'll be receiving an email from us with the training site URL with, a, with a instructions to start, and after you get in there, then you can start you can go to the uh, GIS for iCulture 2 May 2013 and you're going to be viewing this simple screen where you have some things to review and some material to review and then request in the GIS. And we'll be supporting and following up in case you have any issues in completing their, this first step which is to request the NDVI. Well, thank you very much for your participation, and we look forward to a good experience and to learning from you. Uh, well, just one more thing, uh, Jerry, it's out of the country for two weeks. Um, you can complete from anywhere. Jerry, it's all going to be online, and you'll receive notifications by email, so uh, you'll be able to follow the course anytime. Um, and if you're going to be busy, uh, so much time during that period, uh, you can complete it afterwards. We're going to leave the course open. So that's, that's not, uh, well, thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to the course, and we'll be in touch during this next four weeks. Thank you. The organizer has ended the session.